guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bloom update for the month of October. And every time I do these updates, I'm just, I just can't believe how quickly time flies. Um, I can't believe I also have this channel going for three years now. So for those of you who have, who have been here from the very beginning, thank you so much. I have a much bigger collection now. Um, I have pretty much most of the same orchids that I started with, except for the ones that got really, really big, like a lot of the Oncidiums I gave away. Um, and I have seedlings that have started to bloom from three years ago, little baby seedlings that finally I saw them for the first time and I still have many that haven't bloomed yet. So I think it's gonna be a good rest of the year for a lot of my Cattleya orchids. And um, I see a lot of my collection growing well maturing i've um i no longer have spider mite issues which is great because that plagued me for for a while no more thrips i haven't seen any of them i treated the collection um and through the summer i had to spray a lot but we're past that no more um, pest issues but in terms of blooms i don't have a ton to show this month so Now's the time generally where I do start seeing a lot of my Cattleyas bloom, but I'm not seeing a ton right now. I have a couple of blooms, but what does happen now this time of year, now that it's getting cooler, is that my Phalaenopsis orchids are starting to spike. So I left my grow room window open, just cracked a little bit so it could cool the temperatures a little bit at night. And I noticed that all of my um, my standard Phalaenopsis orchid started pushing spikes. So those are going to come in the winter. They just got started, so now's the time. Um, if you're growing Phalaenopsis orchids, just keep them a little cooler, not too cool, but make sure they get a little temperature drop at night. Maybe put them by a window or something like that that's not too cold. You don't want it to get below, say, 55, 60 degrees. That's too cool. But if you could give them a drop that's, say maybe 10 15 degrees cooler at night maybe 20 degrees cooler at night it'll trigger the spikes but anyway i've got some cattleyas going one of my favorite cattleya hybrids is blooming it's so beautiful so i'm going to show you that one um my brassavola little stars is still blooming it had something like 20 blooms last month and it's still it's got like 15 right now which is great it's lasted quite a long time and um, otherwise, everything's been kind of slow right now, so I'm surprised about that. But, but yeah, I don't have too much right now, but what I do have is really nice, so let me show you. So the first circuit I have in bloom is my Brasso Lelio Cattleya Solar Flare Paradise. This is my very first Cattleya, so it's the first Cattleya that I've ever grown. It's really, really cute. It's got a beautiful frilly lip. And what I really like about it is that it stays pretty small. So this orchid is not too tall. It doesn't go past one foot high. I have it in semi-hydro and eventually I'll get it out of this setup, but it's got a really nice tight growth pattern and it's fragrant as well. I got this from Carmela Orchids several years ago. I'm like not even remembering when I got it and I love it. It smells like lemons. The color is nice and bright. It opens up like kind of like a greenish yellow. And then when it brightens, it turns into like a butter yellow and then fades to like a white. This is gorgeous. Highly recommend it. So next up, we have the Phalaenopsis Sogo Relics. And this is a brand new orchid to my collection. I got this as a gift and I know it came from Orchid Classics, if you guys are interested. I looked up the Sogo relics and I saw that many of them have a solid burgundy color and no spotting on the edges, which was interesting. Um, it kind of reminds me of my Phalaenopsis Chang Jia lady, which is similar color. It's like a red, very pretty. This seems to be like in between one of those very complex Phalaenopsis and one of those summer bloomers in that it pushes out uh, sequential blooms. So I look forward to seeing how this grows. It has another spike coming in, so hopefully through the fall and winter, I'll see more blooms. But I know that these tend to get pretty big, so I'll eventually repot it when it's done blooming, get it in a nice little setup, but I like it. It's lightly fragrant, and I love the color. 
So the next orchid that I have in bloom is the Potanera Hawaiian Charisma Hawaii. So this is actually a different orchid. So this was labeled as the BLC Volcano Clown, Volcano Queen. And then when it opened up, I was like, wait a minute, this looks familiar. So I already have this one. But what solidified for me that this was the, um, the, the idea was the fragrance. It smells like a lemon sorbet. Like that fragrance is amazing. Now I grew this. I got this as a gift from my friend and I grew this since it was a tiny, tiny little seedling. So I am thrilled to see this finally bloom. It's been in my care for three years. And as you can see, the flowers are a little misshapen, which is very common. So I wanted to show this orchid because the first time you bloom an orchid, sometimes it doesn't open up perfectly, but usually the next time it, it really improves. So it's totally normal. The next one is the Brasso Catlia Memoria Vern Block. This has become one of my favorite orchids. Now this was gifted to me by my friend Vin and he found the ID recently. It was registered last year and I love it. You guys know how much I love Richard Mueller hybrids. When I looked up the parents, I saw that it also has Cattleya eclandiae in it, which I really love as well, so it makes sense. I definitely need like a Richard Mueller by Cattleya eclandiae. These are very vigorous. I just have a single bloom this time because I repotted it a few months ago, but I know it'll give me many more blooms in the future, but I just love it. It also changes in color from this bronze to like a yellow over time and it's so beautiful. I love the spotting, I love the lip. I love the, the hues of pink in it as well, just gorgeous. The next orchid in bloom was one that was in bloom two months ago. This is the Phalaenopsis bellina cerulea, and I have more blooms now. So I got this orchid at the Tamiami Orchid Festival. I think it was just like $20 or $24, which is a good deal. And it took me two years to bloom it pretty much. I can't believe it's been two years since I went to that orchid show actually. It's growing nicely. I'll probably have to repot it next spring and put it in a bigger pot, but I love it. The blooms are very fragrant and I'm finding that I'm getting more blooms on this than I am with my other Phalaenopsis bellina. That one pushes blooms sequentially, but I generally only get one bloom at a time. So I was thrilled to see three on this one. And um, it looks like it's gonna put on a really good show as this orchid matures. So I'm really happy to grow it and have it as part of my collection. It smells so good too. The next orchid, I showed you guys this one last month, but it's another Cerulea orchid. And I just love it and it's super cute. And I wanted to show you again because it's not done blooming and it's continuing. So this is the Equestra Cerulea. And as you could see when it blooms, some of the blooms fade in the back, but it continues to push out new buds and you get a really, really nice show on this one. This one has tiny little flowers. They are adorable. They're not fragrant, but they're really, really cute. Um, it's cerulea, so it's a little bit blue, purple on the bottom of the lip. Very, very pretty. It's overdue for a repot, and every time I want to repot it, I feel like it's pushing out a spike. But when this is done, I'm going to get it out of this LECA setup and into some moss. And um, I look forward to a better show every year. Next up, this I showed you last month as well. This is the Brassavola Little Stars. And this one is just so fragrant. It smells so good. I have it in my living room. And sometimes even when I'm in a different room, like in the hallway, I could smell it at night. It's just so wonderful. It's kind of like a citrusy, perfumey fragrance, like a lemon a bit, but like, like a lemon perfume. I find it hard to describe, but it's very elegant. I love the way that the nighttime fragrant orchids smell. It gave me a lot of uh, buds. Some have faded, but a lot are still hanging in there, and it's because I up-potted this orchid, so I know that I didn't disturb the root system, really, and I think that the next time that this blooms, I'm going to get an even better show. So I really wanted to show you guys this one because I just, I really like it, too. 
So last, I have my Hoyas that I want to show you. Well, two of them anyway. This is my Hoya Bella. And after two years, I finally got it to bloom. And I wanted to show you because I struggled getting this to bloom. It was really, really tough. So I had this in Lekka. It would dry very, very quickly. And anytime I had peduncles, it would just produce them and they would blast. So I ended up moving this to a soil that's more moisture retentive. And I'm finally seeing the cute little blooms. They're fragrant. This is getting really unruly, so I got to do something about it. But I wanted to show it to you guys. I also wanted to show you my Hoya Hindu rope. This is also the Carnosa Compacta. It's blooming for the very, very first time. I find this orchid just adorable. It's very, very cute. It's very fragrant. It's the same exact flowers as the uh, Carnosa, except the leaves are crinkly and very interesting. This was a gift that I really cherish. I love it. It was small when I got it, and now the vine is about a foot and a half long, maybe two feet long. And when I first saw the flowers, I adored it. This Hoya is very fragrant. It's not um, floral, but very kind of like fruity. Pretty strong as well, and you could smell it at, at night. I treat it like I do any orchid. I give it bright indirect light, and I feed it with MSU fertilizer. I really like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this bloom update. I know it was kind of short, not too much now, but I know I'll have more in the next month or so. Um, I have so many Cattleyas that have not bloomed yet that I bought pretty young. So, you know, when you buy an orchid, it takes a while for it to get used to your conditions, takes a while for it to grow, adapt. And I'm finding that some of my seedlings, I got a lot of orchids that were seedlings. Um, a lot from Sunset Valley orchids, a lot from Carmela orchids. The ones I got from Carmela orchids mostly bloomed, but the ones from Sunset Valley orchids, a lot of them have not bloomed yet. So I feel like those take like two years when you buy them. They're seedlings, but they're not tiny seedlings. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some of those bloom for the first time in the next couple of months. Um, I feel like I'm in the home stretch with most of my collection and maybe like 65 70 percent of the collection has not bloomed very similar to um hillbilly orchids she was talking about it um most of her collection hasn't bloomed yet and it's because we have a lot of younger orchids and when you buy orchids when you get them younger they're more cost efficient when you buy a full grown orchid they're already big they can be quite pricey so when you grow your collection a lot of times we get seedlings we get orchids that are younger and then eventually they become huge on us and we have the specimen size orchids. So sometimes we wait for these orchids to grow and then they really, they're pushing out of seven, eight inch pots and we're like, what happened here? <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.